Grace Family Love Podcast, back again. <laughs> For those that are watching on the YouTube channel, we are not sponsoring McDonald's. <laughs> we, we have the... We have the, it's really, really late right now, and we just probably didn't want to, Joe is out and about. It's like, can you bring us coffee? So, just FYI. Um, today, we wanted to talk to you guys about something that was just really meaningful to me as we took our missionary trip to Mexico on our way back. Um, my back went out. There was a lot of walking, a lot of stairs there. Yeah. Um, it was pretty, pretty intense. Um, the, the workload was intense, and my back was like, okay, this this is this is not the business, Vanessa. We're, we're going on strike. <laughs> so we ended up having to get a wheelchair over there, and um, as we're going on the airport coming back from Guadalajara, I was, you know, sitting on the chair, and Joe was pushing me. And it's interesting because I hear a lot of the times people say like, oh, Vanessa, God's going to heal you from your back or Vanessa, you know, just God's going to do this. And and I don't doubt that God can do whatever he wants. It's been four years of of a lot of uh, pain and and, and injury with my back. And to this day, I've just been patient. So one of the interesting things that happened is that as Joe was pushing me, we went to go take our COVID test. Lily was sitting on my lap, and, and I heard, like, a small, still voice saying, like, if this was your life, would you be content? And in that moment when I heard that, it made me think about all the times in our lives where we're out of con- – where our life is going and things are out of control, and yeah. we're just waiting for things to look up or we're waiting for that answer prayer – and in the meanwhile, we're kind of just being okay because we think that I'm going to get what I want. But what happens if that's not what God wants for your life? Like, what is your real purpose for you serving God? Or what is your real purpose for your faith? Yeah. Or what is your real purpose for you believing that God is who he says he is and that his love for you is, you know, like no other? Like, and I think that that's, that's kind of where I want to go today because if we can really think about that and narrow down in our lives that every time we don't get our way, if we could really trust that God's moving in and, in, and his way is better, then I think that it would save us a lot of heartache, you know, and a lot oh, of yeah. wasted time. Yeah, for sure. God knows how much time I wasted already. <laughs> you know, seriously. So I, I, I think that's great, you know. What is it that you're like? I know you, you felt like God asked you that question. Like, what was your answer? In that moment, it just allowed me to know that that he, my heart, that he still needs to work on my heart hmm. more than anything. And I think that that's what he wanted me to see is that it's really easy to continue to keep moving forward because I'm like moving to the next place where I'm feeling OK or I'm feeling better. But what about if that situation doesn't change? Or what about if God says, now this circumstance for your life is different. It was different than what you thought in mind. Like, will I still be gratefully and eternally grateful and and have that good attitude, more than anything, that good attitude? Because I think that we don't really pay attention too much to attitude and how we act and how we go about life. And I think that, like without a good attitude like you can't be grateful you just can't because you see everything is negative you don't see the good in life so if i don't have a good attitude about what place i'm in or what place god has me in then i feel like i'll miss all the good things that he's doing and i'll miss out on the other opportunities that he's placed in my life because of my bad attitude does that make sense yeah yeah I I like there's this quote that it says that there are three things that you have absolute control over and no matter what, right, nobody can take this away from you. So the three things are your effort, your response and your attitude. Mm -hmm. And you have absolute control over those things. And I know it's in life we get wrapped up in saying like, oh, you made me do this. Or if you wouldn't have said that or did that, I wouldn't have did did this or said that. But really... You know, like our attitude is is really up to us to determine. And so whether things are quote unquote good or bad, like that doesn't mean that our attitude has to be terrible. Yeah. You said something right now where it just 
you said, um, you made me do that, so it made me mad. Or you did this, so it made me sad. And it, it's really easy to say when it's a person, but we do that to our emotions too. Or a cer- certain circumstance in our life. You know what I mean? Like that car cut in front of me. Oh, I'm angry because that car cut in front of me. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like we give authority to situations that are out of our control and we cater to what it's telling us to feel and we allow our emotions to get the best of us um we were on our way home from a trip to cal poly with our our high our son and we heard a song what was it called the dear the dear god no dear x or something like that oh yeah, yeah and um i don't really remember the lyrics i'll probably totally kill it but um it was just talking about like a person telling what was it like anger and bitterness like you you don't own me anymore like you can't yeah. control me anymore and i was telling joe like it's interesting that every day we wake up and we either give control to anger to bitterness to sadness to frustration to like even like discouragement and we literally like hand it over like yeah. our rights like okay well, how should i act today like what it's should true. i do and it's just it's I don't know, like, it's really sad. And, and I, I mean, I, always, I, I wasn't always like this, like, you know, that I would think positive. It was just, um, I don't know, like, over time, I think just going through a lot of heartache, like, God has changed that. But it's like, do we really need to go through a lot of heartache in order to just change our attitude, you know? Yeah. And me personally, I don't think that it was heartache that changed my attitude. I think it was really just God's presence in my life. Mm-hmm. Because I, if left to my own way, my <laughs> attitude is terrible. In a lot of ways, it still is terrible. You know, I'm still working through it. But as I think about it, if if I didn't have God in my life, I don't know if I would be able to see past all my issues mm-hmm. to even recognize what I have right now right in front of me right a relationship with you a relationship with the kids you know friends and family all that stuff I I wouldn't be able to see the goodness of all of those things right in front of me had it not been for God intervening and and really changing my perspective changing my mind and I just um it, it is heartbreaking to think like if I take my own life as an example all the suffering and heartache that I went through it maybe probably at its best made me understand that what I was doing, the way I was living, how I was, was completely far from what I was hoping that I would be, what I was hoping that I would achieve in my lifetime. And I just, looking back now, I'm thinking like, man, thank <laughs> God that he changed my heart because I just would be miserable, like an absolute miserable mess. And so I'm grateful that that I've learned that lesson. And I could only hope now that if anybody that's listening to this, there is so much that you can't control and you just have to be OK with that. Yeah. And, you know, not to sound cliche, but it it's a cliche. <laughs> you know, life is it's not about what happens to you. Right. Ninety percent of what happens to you, you can't control. Yeah. But that 10 percent. That's on you, right? Good choices, good consequences. Bad choices, bad consequences. The kids are probably like, oh, I don't want to hear that ever. And and of everything (laughs) that happens to you, right? It's 10% of how, of what happens and 90% how you respond. Your attitude is completely under your control and you have absolute ownership of how, what attitude you're going to take, what posture you're going to take in response to what happens in life. And I get it, right? Not everybody's life is great. Sometimes things just suck. And and life can be really harsh. I get that. All I'm suggesting is that understanding that you can't control everything helps you to let go of the things that you can't control and understanding that yeah. it's just life, right? Like you can't make everything bend to your will. It doesn't matter how many good intentions you have, bad things are still going to mm-hmm. happen. So our best chance at, at having peace, about having contentment, you know, and being in a place where we can be okay is really having a relationship with Jesus. It's, 
in his life, in his example, in the word of God, right, which is the Bible and in all the things that he gives us to help give us an understanding of what life could be like or is like with the relationship with him. If we put that into practice, then and only then can we truly understand what it means to have peace. Yeah. You know, I, was, I had a chance to give a message a couple of weeks ago about this subject. And too many of us spend so much time running the rat race and we're trying to Mm -hmm. achieve this and attain that and reach this goal, make this amount of money. And all of those things are are wonderful, right? It's, It's good to have a good job. It's nice to have more than enough money to pay your bills. I mean, all that is a wonderful thing. Don't get me wrong. All I'm saying is that if if our heart's desire is always for more money, then it's never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. If our heart's desire is, okay, maybe in five years, you know, I can get this position. And then you get that position. And then after a year, it's not enough anymore. So all I'm suggesting is that the mistake that we make is we're seeking a situation or we're looking for perfect circumstances and then we'll have peace. But Mm -hmm. peace is not a circumstance. It's not something that you can buy or purchase or attain it's something that is is that is found in God's presence because he is peace. And when you have peace, having peace has nothing to do with the circumstances, but everything to do with your closeness in your relationship with God. Because he is peace, then you get to experience his peace as you are close to him. And then regardless yeah. of the circumstances, whether things are good or not, whether you have that job or not, you can still have peace on the journey right because right now i could be making goals but that that shouldn't mean that i'm miserable until i reach the goal no i can have peace and be content in the process enjoy the journey where life is being lived and then i realize that i can have peace and be happy and be joyful through all the circumstances that life has to offer me knowing and understanding that when god is with me he's always going to provide he's always going to take care of me he's always going to make sure i have what i need and I'm never going to be lacking. Or in other words, I'll never be left wanting because I'll be content with where I am as I'm living out life that I don't have to sacrifice my health. I don't have to sacrifice my peace. I don't have to sacrifice joy for the sake of putting everything aside for this grind and this hustle that I may never reach. Right. We yeah. make these wonderful plans for retirement, but that's if I even make it that far. Stress right, out. I stress out. Yeah. So right now, my my life is is really centered around that, like trying to stay close to God so that I could have peace because I'm I can't control so much in life. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I have to run around like a chicken with my head cut off. And, and I think you know, for those that are, are listening and, and I know for us, it just kind of almost seems like it's second. It's like second nature for us to talk about this stuff. And for some people it might feel like okay, yeah, I go to church, but I still don't feel that peace that you're talking about. Yeah. And we say, when we say stay close to God, we're like, but I do go to church. I go to church Sundays and this day. And, yeah. and I, you know, read my Bible app, like, you know, and it's not working. You know, there's a difference between having a relationship with God and that connection. Um, and the best way that I can say or describe it is a relationship between like husband and wife. You know, there's different relationships. There's diff- There's people that are just like married, but they're like roommates. You have no idea what your spouse is up to. You have mm-hmm. no idea what they like, what they dislike. You have no idea what it is to even feel loved by them because you just live in the same building, but it doesn't mean anything. Wow. And when it comes to a relationship that's healthy, you know, I ask you, how are you doing? You know, like, w- what would you like to eat today? Hey, how about we go for a walk today? You know, you s- the time that you spend with each other, it's l- it's it's quality time. And when you have, when you spend that time with God and you find that quality time where it's not just your self-seeking so you can have that, this like, you know, just, I need this because of me. But you're literally just wanting to spend time with him because you know what? Like, God, I can't do this without you. I need you in my life. You know, more than just reading these, the reading these words on this devotional, like, let me see what your word says. Let me read it and break it down and see what you're trying to say in my life. Let me listen to these worship music and really just pour my heart out to you. Like those moments that you just really kind of take that mask off and you really reveal your true self to God is when you get that connection 
And when you actually allow God in your life, and when you allow God in your life, his peace, his presence is with you. It's it's near you. And you feel this peace that, that like God says, it overpasses like in any understanding that anybody could have. It over, like it, it's, it goes beyond the bills. It goes beyond your emotions. It goes yeah. beyond pain. It goes beyond trials. It goes beyond suffering. It goes beyond something that in the moment you could not, that it, it doesn't it doesn't like it doesn't make sense that you can be at ease knowing that you're still in this situation it doesn't make sense and the the best way that i can say and describe this is that the god of this universe the god the only god of this you know place he knows the ending to your life he knows the beginning he knows the middle and he knows the end he sees the bigger picture that you don't see yeah. So when you go near him, you feel this peace because there's something that he knows that you don't know. And he allows you to know, like, it's going to be okay. You know, and that's the the closeness that 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 needs to happen in order for you to feel that peace. You know, by you saying, like, I need you, God. Like, I'm being completely, just brutally honest. You know, and like, there's nothing that surprises God. God doesn't say, oops. I didn't know that was going to happen to you. Oops, I didn't know your husband was going to cheat on you. Oops, I didn't know you were going to be broke like mm-hmm. yesterday. Like he he know there's nothing that he doesn't know about your life. Yeah. So you need to go to him because he knows it all. So that way you can have that peace. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I need that <laughs> you know, all the time. So just like you guys, we're in this with you guys together. And just like you guys, the transi- the transition that we're in, you know, starting our group home and, you know, doing all of this, like we're in this with you guys. We don't know our, we don't even know what's up in a month, in a week, in tomorrow. We don't know, you know, and that, that uncertainty, it's uncomfortable because it's outside our comfort zone and we have zero control, Yeah, you know, but. What we also have to try every single day is work on our attitude, work on being close to God and having that intimacy with God to say, God, I don't know what's next, but you do. I need that peace to keep going to the next hour, to the next day, to the next week. So we're in this with you guys and we're not asking you to do something that we're not doing ourselves. Yeah. You know, so um, I just pray that today as you listen to this and, and it's not a coincidence that you're listening to this specific podcast, you know, there's maybe something in your heart that you've been asking God or saying, why am I in this situation? And God's yeah. just saying, like, you don't need to know why you just need to have peace and you need to let me and allow me to keep doing what I'm doing and just trust in me and you focus on your relationship with me and I focus on controlling what you can't. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, you want to pray? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Lord, I just, um, I just want to thank you for everybody that's listening. I, I want to thank you for all that you've been doing in our life to get us to this point right now. Lord, help us and everybody listening to just realize that we don't have to be concerned with every single thing that happens because there is so much that we can't control. But what we can do is give it up to you. Yeah. Lord, we give you control over our life. We give you control over our circumstances. We give you control of, over our burdens and, and the things that we carry that are too heavy for us. Or would you just take those things and remove them from us and allow us that we would be more concerned about having a relationship with you, that we would be most concerned about pleasing you in the way that we live. Yes. Help us to stay in your word. Help us to stay connected with you. And in doing so, Lord, that you'll remove the heaviness and the weight of all these things from us, knowing that you're in control can give us the peace of knowing that you're always going to make sure that things work out for good, that you'll make sure that things in somehow, some way, Lord, even when we can't see an exit, Lord, you make a way. Lord, you open and close doors according to your will. Help us to trust in you and walk in faith as you help us to live out the purpose that you've given for us in our lives. 